Hello guys, it's Dove again. So today I wanted to talk to you about rainwater contamination and what you can do about it, or at least try to do about it. And this is rainwater that you're using for your plants, not for drinking. And a lot of people are concerned about the contamination from the Fukushima disaster. At least I am, and I'm sure a lot of other people are. And I really don't want to water my plants with rainwater that has a bunch of radioactive isotopes in it, you know. And so I came up with this idea for my rain barrels because I have several rain barrels and I hang these little gadgets down in the rain barrel and I'm not really good with the editing software but I will try to show you a picture of this thing when it's completed so that you get a good idea of it and you can get it in all one shot because I actually have the camera on a tripod right now and I don't want to move it because it creates a lot of extra extra noise and it's all shaky and stuff in most of my videos so I was trying to make this one not so shaky so hopefully this is helping but I'll show you a picture of what it looks like I'll hang it on the door knob or something so that you can see it in its vertical position and what I have here is charcoal, agriculture grade charcoal, and something called zeolite, which is this type that I have is also uh, agriculture grade. And zeolite and charcoal both have the propensity of adsorbing uh, other things, like charcoal absorbs, or excuse me, adsorbs, with a D, adsorbs, it adsorbs um, iodine before it grabs onto anything else and so this is particularly good I think for cleaning up um, radioactive iodine that might be in your rainwater because of the nuclear disaster or whatever you know we have contamination from just about everything and this has really just made it a lot worse and so the charcoal will ab absorb more than iodine but it's the first thing it goes for and then um, the zeolite is this white granular stuff and it also adsorbs contaminants and they use it in um, water treatment plants in some places because it actually does absorb a lot of contamination and so these things you can put certainly right into your soil and so when it rains and stuff, you'll have these things in your soil and they'll be sitting there and they'll be ab absorbing the contamination. But this is this is in addition to that. This is for your rainwater because, you know, if you're like me, you have a lot of rainwater to collect and so that rainwater also needs treated. And, you know, you don't have to do this. If you just, if you're putting it into your soil, then you don't have to do this. This is like an extra precaution, you know, or you could do one or the other. Um, this year I did not put these into the soil and so I'm definitely wanting to get these into my rain barrels. Last year I put it into my soil and I treated my tra my rainwater so it was like an extra assurance for me. <coughs> Sorry, I had to check the time. I have seven minutes. And so, what you want to do is you want to find, on top of being it, you know, you have to get this char charcoal and the Zeo, this is Zeo Max. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. Zeo Max. And it's right there is Zeolite Mineral. And you, I'll put some information down in the description because I'm not quite sure if you can even see that. And so, what I do is I take these linen bags that I got at Mountain Rose Herbs, and they're just for making herb sachets or whatever, or teas. You know, this is actually much bigger than one of the tea bags, um, because I think the tea bags are too small. That's a normal linen reusable tea bag, and it has the drawstrings on it. And that's what you'd normally use for making cups of herbal tea or whatever, but and this one is like twice as big. That's just too small for these purposes. So I use this one and it's like a muslin linen type cloth. It has your drawstring on the side. 
and so I fill it all the way to the top with the charcoal and on each string for each rain barrel I do four and I normally like to do six but I ran out of bags and I only have enough bags to do four per rain barrel and so I'm just doing two bags of charcoal okay and two bags of zeolite and I filled them all the way to the top and I drew them really tight and then I made a knot right there hopefully you can see that to keep all the stuff in there there's my knot and this is pretty heavy the charcoal will actually float in the water and so when you put this together the first one you tie on will be the bottom one and you want to make sure that that's your zeolite because that's nice and heavy and it'll help hold the whole thing down because the charcoal will just sit there and float until it starts taking on water and so the first one I put on I I use this it's a nylon I think it's a flat twine something or other I don't know but I use way more than I think I'm gonna need because you have to measure your rain barrel and you want obviously you want that whole length to be down into the rainwater and mine happened to be like 32 inches, 33 inches, something like that and so I want at least that much and then I just I made it twice as long because you have to tie it off on the end on the outside of your rain barrel. Okay, four more minutes. I'm good to go so far. <laughs> I may have to make another part to this. I'm sorry if I do. And so I've got this at six feet long. Okay, and half of it's gonna be probably hanging out the rain barrel. You're going to tie it off to something, and I'll show you that later. And, yeah, I'll have to make another clip because I'll want to show you how to put it down into your rain barrel and everything. And so I tie the first one on, which is the zeolite, and I've got a little tail there. And I tie the string to... I, dry the, I tie the drawstring to the twine, and then I double knot that and then I do, I draw, excuse me, I'm tongue-tied today, I tie the twine to the drawstring and I double knot that and it's still trying to slip and I'm just using a granny knot and so that's probably why. So if you wanted to, you could, I'm not going to do that now <laughs> or I'm going to run out of time, but if you want to, you can make triple knots or just make a better knot than I did because I don't know very many knots and so I'm sure there's more, a more applicable knot that you could be using. And so I got the first one is the zeolite, then the charcoal, then another zeolite, and then another charcoal, and then the other half of the string. Okay. And so that will get suspended down into your rain barrel and help to clean up some of the contamination that's in your rainwater. I actually have two minutes left, but I think I'm going to go ahead and stop the video now so that I don't run out of time. Oh, I can show you this. I meant to show you this earlier. This is the charcoal, and it's really sooty and dirty when you dump it out of the bag and so I take just a sieve that I use just for gardening and I pour it in there and just shake it around like that. This is the easiest and best movement so that it doesn't come flying out of your thing and you don't want to use this in the kitchen again of course but if you look at all the that soot that I've gotten off there so if you do this it makes it a lot cleaner when you're putting it in your bag because you really don't want to have it all black and sooty and nasty. So I do that first and then I just take a small measuring cup and open my bag. And pour it in. I'm probably running out of time now. If we get it cut off, I'm sorry. <laughs> because I can't see how much time I have left. And so I fill it right to the top, and that's probably like two cups of stuff in there. And then I just draw it really tight. And then I tie a knot in it first. And then I do the 
I tied in knots to the, uh, sorry. I don't fumble this much in real life, just on film, <laughs> just on camera. But you want to get it as close as you can. That's why it was taking me so long, because you want to get it as close as you can to the, to the bag, okay, so that it all stays in there, okay? And so, next I will show you how you hook this into your rain barrel, how you put it down in there and attach it onto the outside, okay? Okay guys, I'm back. So, I just wanted to show you again what you're going to need. Just real quickly, you'll need agriculture grade charcoal and agriculture grade zeolite. Okay? And you'll need some kind of waterproof twine that is really strong. This is a flat nylon type twine, I guess, for lack of a better word, it comes on a on a roll, and I just put it in a jar, and it makes it really easy to pull it out, and then I keep a pair of scissors with it. And then you'll need some linen bags, or something to that effect. I mean, you can definitely uh, just rig something up, like if you don't have these, and you can't afford them, or you can't find them, or whatever, if you can, I don't know, just be creative, I guess. I mean, I don't know what else you would use, really, besides old t-shirt material or something, but I don't know. Um, so just be creative or find something like this. They're really not that expensive, and you get them in packs of, like, 50 or 100. Okay, and I think that was everything. You got your little bags filled to the top and tied, and each bag is tied to your string. And then over here, I will show you what it looks like. I tied it to my trellis so you can see it. So this is the extra length that's going to go on the outside of the rain barrel. And then right there, you want to make sure that the length is right so that all these are going to be suspended into the rainwater and you're going to have plenty left over to tie it off on the outside. Okay? And then you want to take that over to your rain barrel and it depends on what kind of rain barrel you have as to how you're going to do this. And I have two different rain barrels and so I'll show you how I do both of them. This is an old pickle barrel that has an overflow spout right here and this is screened off. Okay? And there's the spout, and it's got a cap on it. And so I'm tying it to this. Okay, and we actually have three rain barrels daisy chained together, and I'm going to be putting one of these gadgets in all of them. And so there's a screen, and the water comes down out of the gutter into there. Okay, and so that comes right off. You'll take that off and suspend your bags right down in there, and then you're going to tie it off to that knob, okay, in the most secure fashion that you can. Just make sure that all those bags are down in there, okay? Alright, so you can see the two charcoal bags down in there because they're trying to float right now, and I have most of the six feet of my twine down into this rain barrel because the charcoal, if I didn't have it all the way down in there, the charcoal bags would just basically float on top. And because I can't, the the rain barrel won't fill up all the way on these until I get enough rain, you know, it'll finally go past that point of juncture because that's where the they're all daisy changed and everything. But until then, the water level is going to stay low like that. Okay, and so I had to have extra length to go down in there so that the charcoal would be submerged. And that zeolite is down there and it's pulling the line down there. And you could, if you wanted to change the order of how you do this, you could do the one zeolite on the bottom and then put the two, two uh, 
two uh, charcoal bags in the center and then finish off instead of finishing off with charcoal you could finish off with zeolite and that would weigh it down even more and so that, that would you know, totally ensure that your charcoal was down there pretty much so I should have done that and I didn't but it's too late now <laughs> I'm not undoing it <laughs> so yeah you can see that there's just barely any out of the barrel here and I like these barrels because the, as old pickle barrels the whole lid unscrews and it comes right off and when you go to clean the barrels out because they can get pretty nasty when you go to clean them out it's so much easier than my other rain barrel which I'll show you here in a minute um, because there's just a little tiny opening on that rain barrel and <laughs> try and get your arm down in there to scrub the sides of it and it's really hard to do so this is a much nicer design as far as rain barrels go and as far as the the length of time that you would use this I would say just one season and then when you go to clean out the rain barrel just take this out and dispose of it and you can keep the bags if you want you can dump what's in the bags and try to clean them up like in a bowl of vinegar or something really strong you know you can try to clean them up but if they're especially if they're in a white rain barrel they can get really nasty with the algae and everything so I just prefer to toss it. <laughs> I, I probably shouldn't. That's not environmentally friendly, but I mean, they can get pretty nasty, especially if you don't do it at the end of the year. If you wait until, you know, the next spring or something, and you peer down in your rain barrel, and you're like, oh god. <laughs> so, it is wise to clean out your rain barrels once a year. Okay? And so, oh, I wanted to show you the lid on this. I really like these. So it's basically, it's two pieces, but it's three pieces if you count the, um, the screen. But if you're putting one of these together, you can buy these things. If you can, if you can find them, get them, because you can get them for like, you know, sometimes as cheap as five to ten dollars, and sometimes you might buy, pay twenty-five dollars for them. And I only paid twenty-five dollars for these, each one, and they were totally finished, so actually... I got a good bargain, and I didn't even have to turn it into a rain barrel. It was already a rain barrel. But it came with this piece of screen, and you'd put, you'd want to put your own piece of screen if, in there if uh, if you were making your own. And then this ring goes right on top of it. See, it's pulling on it a bit, but that's all right. And you're just gonna, not real tight, you know, you don't want to break your twine or anything. But you want to get it on there nice and securely. And so that is the pickle barrel style of rain barrels and how I have those submerged. And so I will show you my other style of rain barrel here in a second. Okay? Thank you. Okay, so this is the other kind of rain barrel I have, and it's the type that uh, liquids and stuff are shipped in. It's plastic, but like corn syrup and things like that, and it's been turned into a rain barrel. So I have to it down there. And for here, you have a hole right there, and that's where your gutter goes in. And then you have this thing on the other side of it, and that's what I tie it off onto when I'm putting the, my cleaning gadgets down in there, my absorbing line here. Okay, so you can see it right there. In this one, I actually did have six bags on, and so each one of them is not quite full to the top of charcoal and zeolite because I did have six bags, and so I didn't feel the need to do that. But you want to go ahead and drop it down in there and make sure that it's all the way down in there, and then you'll take your excess out here, and you'll tie it off onto whatever you have to tie it off onto. Okay, pick whatever. There should be something on your rain barrel that will allow you to tie it off. And this right here is another way that I use for cleaning up the rain water. And it's not, it's not for the radioactive stuff, of course, but it does a really good job of catching leaves and 
shingle stuff and, you know, whirly birds or whatever you might have coming out of your gutter. And this is, again, one of those bendy type um, drain hoses that are specifically for water use. This is not a, it's not one of those uh, dryer vents. It's specifically for rainwater, so safe to use. And then I just put the screen over that. And then you can put a rubber band around it. I used to do that. But the rubber bands after time would always break. And I found that it's tight enough in here that I don't, I actually don't need a rubber band. And I can't really do this one handed. But I wanted to show you that over there on the other rain barrel and on this one that this is pretty much why you want to use something flat because you have a tight fit right here and so you wouldn't want a big bulky string like twine or anything and plus twine you know may not last very long in the water and so that's why I chose this flat nylon stuff and so just take it and push it down in there but you can see especially since I can't use both hands it's a really tight fit and so there's really no need to put a rubber band on that if, as long as you cut the screen to be way bigger than you need it and it's, some of it's sticking up then that'll be its final resting point because that's what it wanted to do it wanted to pop out like that <laughs> but it's not going to go anywhere it's, I've never had one come out or anything so yeah just make sure that you get the screen I cut it in a circle and I cut it way bigger than I need it to be so that it's sticking out now sometimes these rain barrels will come with an attachment that um, has a different shape uh, uh, end on it. And so just use what you have to use. You know, you can cut your screen in a circle or in a rectangle or whatever and just pull it up over the end of that and push it down in there. And then you've got your bag suspended down in there and tied off. And just tie it as tight as you can. I mean, this isn't this, like I said, this is like, what, a granny knot or something? I don't know. But it's probably not the most secure, and I'll probably have to work on that. But I've never had a problem. You know, it's never fallen off. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. It's never it's never been a problem, even though it's not a really tight knot. Because, you know, combined with this thing trapping it and the knot there, and it's probably not going to go anywhere. So... Okay, well I just wanted to show you how you can clean up your rainwater a little bit by doing a pre-filter and then using the zeolite and the charcoal to absorb any contamination that might be there from the air or from your asphalt shingles or anything like that. Okay, hope you found it useful. And just let me know if you have any questions and I'll try to answer them. Thanks. Bye.